So, yeah, so your testimony is formulated by the words that you've spoken, the words of you overcoming the of, of the last season or the last battle that you were in, right? Your words is what brought you to where you are. You decided to say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to either... I'm saying no to the devil. I'm saying yes to God. I'm 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 giving glory to God. I'm gonna worship God. I'm gonna be triumphant with my wording. I'm gonna be intentional with my verbiage. I'm I am going to do these different things with my tongue, all coming from what you speak. And 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 the authority that you have with you being able to speak and decree a thing and declare a thing in this earth, it goes into the spiritual realms, into the heavens, and it signifies and it says, Hey, they're not with this, or oh, oh, they did do this. But it all happens with our words. And so I just my, my prayer is is that we understand the power of our word, the power of our tongue. And that we look at how we are are lined up in battle because what we say and what we yield to, you know, is 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 pretty much what happens. Like when you what you speak and you yield to what you speak. So so it's just important that we understand that authority and that power that we have. Um and Understanding that the different cultures and the different uh, the different things that that we are facing comes within our tongue. It comes within uh, our our victory comes within what we believe and what we speak, and it goes with the battlefields of the mind. It goes with goes with the battlefield of the tongue. So, let's pray real quick, and we'll get into this uh, message and. Then, we have two more worship songs and we'll be done. So we pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. Lord, I just thank you, O God, for this opportunity, O Father, to be in front of your people, O Lord. To be able to encourage them, O God, and give them things as nourishment, O God. I hope, I pray, O Father, that you will be more, even more present, O God. That you will uh, get the victory and that you will get the glory, O God. For it's not about us, but it's about you. It's about lifting you up so that you can draw all men to you, O Father. Because we can lift up some things and draw some people, but it's not going to be an eternal train change. All that it's going to do is just going to... Uh, give false hope but if we put you and we lift you up you are the real hope you are the real truth you are the one who who designed the plan that we're in you have you are the one who are leading and guiding you're the one who is perfect perfecting and protecting us oh father so lord god i pray oh father that we will understand the power and authority of our of our word, O oh God, of our testimony, O oh God, that we understand the covering of the blood and how we are victorious over the enemy by those two things. It's simple, O oh Lord. We a lot of times we try to complicate things, and when we complicate things, we kind of make things more convoluted. Uh, we make things a little bit more complicated. But Lord Jesus, you are a God of simple. Um, when you when you were when you were here, you were you are the creator, right? And then you know we have an antagonist, the devil, who would try to come in and act like he's being bad, but he has to come to you for permission. You have to give the word of yes or no. He just doesn't have free reign. Um, but even as last week that we talked about the being able to uh, understand uh, the power of having the, the, uh, to go into the courts of heaven and to get in spiritual restraining orders against the enemy, uh, Lord, that, that we know, oh, Father, that it comes at your word. It comes at our word. And we understand that some of the things that we do gives the devil ammunition to be able to say, hey, they're doing this, so I want to do that. You know, even like in the book 
of Job, the devil walked to and fro through the earth seeking whom he may devour. And you asked, so Father, have you considered my servant Job? Because and and he says no because you have a hedge of protection around him, but Lord you said I would lift that hedge of protection and Job still won't curse me to my face, but the devil says oh I bet you he will let me touch his skin skin for skin let me touch his family let me touch his wealth let me touch his riches, uh and and I guarantee he will curse you Lord and a lot of times we don't understand that we are in the middle of a test and the enemy is touching things because. We, you have lifted that hedge only because you trust in the word that you have put inside of us that we won't leave you, we won't neglect you. Yeah, we might have some issues, we may have some turbulence, we may fall, but Lord, we get back up and we keep pushing and keep pressing moving forward. Lord, I pray, oh Father, that you would give strength, oh God, that you would give your spiritual uh, shots, oh God. Uh, booster shots to your people here, oh Father, so that they may be able to uh, withstand the works of the enemy, oh Lord. And if they're going through these seasons of, of tests and trials, oh Lord, that they will acknowledge you, oh Father, and they will worship you, oh God, that they will glorify you, and that they will continue to move forward, oh Father, in spite of, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we also pray, oh Father, that, that you will open up our eyes, open up our understanding, allow us to see how we're being attacked Tact, allow us to formulate our own plan to be able to to go forward and move forward and pass the the different temptations and different distractions in our lives, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, 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 you are God. Or we do not want to be in a position where on judgment day that we that we say we said we cast out demons in your name. We we healed. We we, we prayed for the sick. We healed the sick. We fed the homeless. And you know you tell us that we don't know us, Lord. We did not come here for that reason, oh God. We came here, and the reason why we come and have a relationship with you is so that we can be with you in the next life, eternity, both now and then, oh Father. So Lord Jesus, we pray, oh Father, that wherever it may be some faulty, anything that's false, anything that's not from you, Lord, we ask, O God, that you replace it with you, the true, genuine God, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, and by Father, we pray, O Father, that you would just uh, bless them, give them favor on their jobs, O God, give them favor in their works, give them favor in the classroom, O Father, give them favor where they go in and where they come out, O God, bless them, O God, strengthen them, O God, multiply them, O Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and we'll forever give your name, the glory, and all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. So, the battlefield of yes and no. So we're going to read uh, Daniel chapter 3. All right. And it reads, King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. And it's set up on a, the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the office, high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, Judges, magistrates, and all the uh, provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. So all the officials came and stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So at the sound of the instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bow to the ground and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They, had said, they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue. When they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments. 
that decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into the blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. The Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they, brought, when they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you should refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down. And worship the statues I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, uh, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace... The God whom we serve is able to serve us, is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded the, such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. In other versions, the KJV, it says, the fourth looks like the son of God. So I want to add that in there. It looks like the son of God. The Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, official governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word, Against the, against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Then, king, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. That's an interesting story. This is a, a, a example of your yes and your no, right? They decided we have here Nebuchadnezzar, who is full of himself, um, you know, 
my old pastor used to call him a, a deranged nut. <laughs> Because uh, he was so full of himself. He thought he was God himself and he could just create and what he says goes. Uh, so what happened was you have him creating this statue, this gold statue, and telling all the people that at the sound of music, that and at the sound of his word, that they are to bow down and worship this image that he had resurrected, Right? that he has created, that he has put up, and he wanted everybody to to worship it because he felt like what he says goes. But what he didn't understand uh, was that what he says doesn't go, but only what God says goes, right? So everybody was bowing down and worshiping this golden image, and they were saying yes to it, but there was three men, and I'm sure Daniel was a part of the men, but they didn't bother Daniel. <laughs> um, and there was probably others, but they didn't bother them. But they bothered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because these people are, they were the ones who were uh, put over and had like the authority at that time in the provinces. And they were, I'm sure they were jealous of them as well of all the things that they were able to do and the wisdom that God has given them. But when he told them to bow down and worship him, they was, they simply was like, no. And, you know, and it made him so mad when he heard that they wouldn't do what he asked what he told them to do. It made him furious uh, to the point that his countenance changed. And he was so angry that he was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you another shot because you know you guys have done good. You all have uh, gave me profits off of my off of my earnings, right? You've done the things I told you to do, so I'm gonna give you another chance. So at the sound of the music and at the sound of you know at my side, you're gonna bow down and worship them. Again, they said no. And so he got furious. He says, you know what? Turn that fire, that furnace up seven times hotter. Turn it up hotter. And he, he chose some of his strongest people. He says, throw them into the fire. He threw, they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. And the men that threw them in the fire, they ended up dying. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fire, and they was just standing there. They were thriving and surviving. <laughs> they were there. Um, and, you know, but the king's men did not survive. And so the king is looking at the fire, and he's looking and says, wait, there's a fourth one in the fire. Right? And they looked at it, and they're like, it's like, yeah, it is. He said, man, that looks like the son of God. And he realized, he's like, man, what have, what have I done? I might have fitted it. The God. So he comes and he calls them out and says, Hey, Sherry, me should go to Bendigo. Come on out of here. He he couldn't get too close because it was too hot. He would have he would burnt himself up. So they walked out. They didn't even have a stench of smell of smoke on them. And they all looked and they were just like, wow, and in awe. And of course, after he realized that uh that his words wasn't as strong as he thought it were. And he was kind of embarrassed in front of his own kingdom. He, he's like, look, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Man, all hail to your God, who's the true and living God. And he, just, he decided to put in decrees, put decrees, and declarations of no one messing or making fun of or coming at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for worshiping their God. And all these things was done with words. But it was God's action and preservation of his people is what caused the refute of one kingdom to go against God's kingdom, to show that God's kingdom was superior. And it puts them in their mind. And I feel like where we are in today's age, we're we're in a similar season, right? Um... We have a lot of things going on that would try to uh, 
hinder us and we have things that are coming that we are going to have to say no to, right? Uh, you know, you have the president and them, they always saying, hey, and I'm not, this is, this is in no way, form or fashion coming at people that took the jab, right? Took the vac- vaccination shot. I'm not trying to come at you all for that. That's not, that, that was everybody's choice. You know, you felt what you felt. That's fine. Um, but what I am saying is there are coming a season, a time where the, the enemy is going to come with that mark, with that, you know, that signet, and it will want us to bow, and it was going to want us to, to, to give us our, give our yes, right, so that they could in, in, uh, fill us up with things that are not from God, that doesn't even belong in our body, right? And we are going to have to trust God. And this is why I gave the instructions last week. And I also sent them uh, 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 a link from uh, from uh, Brandon Giles, right? Uh, him talking about what, from a prophetic standpoint, of what's coming. Like, and some of the stuff that he talked about, some stuff that God told me, and then he has other stuff he expands more in greater detail of what's coming and, you know, and and how we are to move, right? Um, this is the same guy that prophesied in 2015 COVID, and everybody, all the bishops and apostles, they thought he was crazy, and then it happened in 2020. Took five years, but it still happened. He just decreed and declared what God showed him and told him it was coming. And I want us to be able to be prepared and be strong enough to say no. And be be strong enough to give our yes, to understand that we have the authority, we have the ability to to, to stand in these things. You know, when we uh, take communion, right during these seasons, uh, in Psalms ninety one, if you want to read it, read that chapter. It talks about when we're in line with God, and He makes sure the plague does not even come near our door. That's why it's important that we anoint our houses, anoint the windows, anoint. The doors anoint, you know. I say the bathroom and the kitchen because me personally, like in our house, angels descend and ascend um, from the bathroom. Seriously, no joke. Like we we we'll see angels who like what's going on here. Like and they're becoming it come in and out uh, our, of our house. Uh, we've seen them, Chad's seen them, I've seen them. Um, other people that's been in our house have seen angels. Um, but like. Those are portals, spiritual portals. So you want to make sure that you are are covering those areas, those entry points of the house. Um, and you, you're covering it because you don't want the enemy to be able to to use as a foothold, foothold. But I know one thing is that even when you pray over your house and you speak the power, you speak a, a life over, you speak Christ, you, and you worship it, and you have developed that atmosphere in your house, like the enemy just can't just ram, ram, ram part your house, right? He just can't come in and just take over. He can't. Um, because you have created an atmosphere. You have created a place of worship. You have created a place where the fear of God, the presence of God will rest. You know, there's there's times when, when people look at and, there's, and they see things different things in you because it's the spirit of God in you, the light of God in you. Right. Um, you know, I got people that will say, look at me and say, man, I see the, the light of God in you. And, and I'll be sitting there like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, some people will be looking at it, They see a light. They don't know what the light is. They just recognize it. But it's, it's just Christ in me. It's not Philip. I do not dare say that it's me. Because I know it's not me. I know where I come from. I know who brought me. I know that he, he's given me authority. I know that when I speak something in the spiritual realm to the physical realm, it has to go. Like, like uh, God has given me authority and he's given you authority to be able to speak things and decree and declare things and to pray over things that you will be able to see the authority of God in your life. Right, we talked about last week. Uh, don't don't get distracted in the midst of a storm. Right, the fog just because it it looks one way does not mean it's going to end that way. The weapons may form it does not mean it's going to prosper. You may be in the middle of a battle, but it doesn't mean you're going to lose. 
It may look scary. It may look vicious. It may look, it may look dreary. It may look like all oh, hope is gone. But when you have Christ in your life and you are focused on Him, then those things doesn't really matter. Your power, your authority, your yes, your no, yes to God, no to the devil, is powerful. And like I said last week, when you take the word of God and you pray the word of God and you mix it together with your faith, it raises, it sets up a standard in the spiritual realm. You put all those things together, you will begin to see how God will use you. You'll begin to see how God's hand will perform on you. You know, we, we you know, so yes, there's new things on this earth that we have not seen in our age. Now, during Noah time, they were there. They were active. They formed Nephilims. They did all kinds of stuff, right? They went into the daughters of men, created demons. You know, that's what demons are. They're, they're, neph- they're, they're children of a woman and a fallen angel. They're half, they're half angelic and then they're half a human. So they're not of the same species of a human and human. And and angels do not and angels do not uh procreate. Because in heaven there's no need to do that. Because God is the life. And what he gives life to, he creates. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, you should look and say, I am a creation of God. I am God's creation. He breathed life into you. He formed you in your mother's womb. And before you was formed, he knew you. So we have to get on our tasks, get on our jobs. Don't get distracted from the enemy in the middle of a battle. But we understand that the battle really begins with our yes and our no. It begins there and it ends there. It's simple. But the devil likes to send distractions. He likes to try to make us feel like it's more than that. It is okay to have a good imagination. But if you have, then he could. He'll make it seem like it's Harry Potter. And you have to look in this book. You have to do this. You have to put this concoction. You have to do that. When it's simple, your yes or your no. See, all that extra stuff is extra stuff. To distract you. All you need is your word. All you need is God. It's simple. That's the power of your yes and no. All of God's promises are yes and amen. And his promises come at his what? His word. So you have to receive him at his word by your what? Faith. And you mix it with your word. And you keep doing it until it comes to pass. You keep pushing and pursuing until it comes to pass. I know I've said this a couple times. Keep doing what you're doing until you can do better. I still drive for Lyft until I'm able to get this cybersecurity stuff going. Yes, I got a job at Amazon as an engineer and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like, until I get to where I need to be, until it's fully clear, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing until I can do better. And so as the devil is like, trying to put stuff and trying to prep things in this earth um, through different people, different authority figures, you know, what's coming, this next uh, pandemic that's, that's going to come, it's, it's inevitable. I might, this ain't me uh, joining in with it. I know it's coming because God told me it's coming. 
And then he reaffirmed it. The Bible says with two or three witnesses, he would affirm the word, right? He will confirm what he told you. So we have to be ready. We have to be ready. It's like, it's so much stuff. Like there's a, this a whole, there's a whole nother thing we, we can talk about after this or whatever. But, uh, what I, what I, uh, have envisioned, like a couple months ago when I told y'all when, I, um, I had that, that vision and I was in heaven and it was all these men and these people in their beings with all white on, right? And then there was this spray bottle that anybody who had like off white, they would spray it. It, was, it looked like it was like water and blood mixed and they sprayed it and it made them even whiter. It was so bright. But in there, in that room, everybody they were talking about strategies. And I was like, man, what am I doing up here? Because <laughs> you know, I, I was just like, whoa. Um, and I saw Prophet Kim Clement, um, the same guy who prophesied Trump in the office or whatever. Um, and, you know, and the devil often tries to take that away. So I say, oh, because he said Trump is going to get two terms. He only had one term, but he's running again, right? So if he gets elected, that fulfills a prophecy. <laughs> but it looked, it made it seem like, see how the devil worked? He tried to make he he let Biden get in office, and I, you know, I'm not nothing trying to get political or whatever. But I, what I'm saying is that he tried to put something in to try to wedge to try to make God's word look false. Now, if Trump get back in office, that fulfills God's word. Then what? That's a whole other story. <laughs> Another time. But the devil would try to do things. But in my vision that I had, that I would and I had. Like they would talk about strategies and stuff like that, and they and each of one of us has been given strategy to be able to uh, combat what's coming in in this next season. Um, and you know, my my thing is is you know I'm not necessarily a big gardener or whatever, but I feel like we should definitely get, get some land or something and put some stuff in there that we plant of our own. Um, <sighs> You know, and I'm pretty sure there's more strategy that God has for me that's going to be unveiled when it's time. <coughs> Excuse me. So I know that uh, there's coming that time and season. And <coughs> when he unveils the rest of his plan to me, I definitely let y'all know. But I believe I'm one of the people he's given strategy to. Um, to combat what the enemy is doing. Um, it, it's been prophesied only several times from Taiwanese churches to African-American churches, Latino churches, uh, you know, of what I'm called to do in this, in this season, in this, in this time. Um, as an end-time warrior for, for the kingdom of God, we all are end-time warriors. And God giving us authority with our yes and our no. So, just want you to be aware of what's going on in this season, this time. Um, and I hope y'all watch that video. And if you didn't get the link, I, I'll send it to you so you can look at it. It's about about 40 some minutes, I think. Um, but it's, it's, you know, when you hear it, I mean, the, the truth should recognize the truth in you. So, uh but yeah, if I were to give you another example, it would be in Daniel chapter 6, right? I we don't have to go there, but uh, y'all can read that. Daniel's in the, in the lion's den, right? Like, God has put an excellent spirit inside of us, but you have a lot of people that are jealous of you, and they're trying to set you up just to try to get you, take you down. And you, we all know what happened with Daniel's in the lion's den. Like, they were jealous because he they was praying to God three times a day, and they couldn't fall, find any fault in him because they were huge. Uh, Darius, King Darius, he was going to put him over. He put him over everybody. You know, the only person probably that was greater than him was King Darius. And people didn't like that. But the only thing they found fault with with Daniel was that his his relationship with God and how he prayed to God. And so they tricked King Darius to create a law to say that anybody who worships for 30 days worship any other God instead of uh, worshiping King Darius should be thrown into the lion's den. And Darius wasn't thinking. He was thinking about Daniel. He was like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, sign that. Put my signature on it. 
put a signet ring on it. And sure enough, when Daniel went to pray, they said, gotcha. <laughs> like, grabbed him up, said, hey, uh, King Darius, you remember what you just said, the sign that, you know, the law, you just signed it to the, in effect, to anybody who in the next 30 days worship anything but you, right? You remember that? You going to throw him into the lion's den. He was, oh, man, he got sorely discomforted because he knew that Daniel worshiped. And he knew that he Daniel prayed three times a day. And that's one of the things he respected that he was so devout. And, but he also knew the laws that could be changed by a king. Now, if he was thinking, he would say, I am the king, so I can reverse this thing. But according to their law and stuff, I guess you couldn't do that. But so Daniel, so the King Darius couldn't reverse it. And he had to put Daniel into the lion's den. And at, all night he prayed and fasted for Daniel. And when he woke up, he went to the lines then and said, hey, was your, was your God able to preserve you? He said, yes, the God sent the angel and shut the lion's mouth. Okay, get Daniel out of there ASAP. Give me the people who, who orchestrated this plan, them and their family, threw them into the den. Before they even hit the flow, their bones were broken by the lions. Okay? That's a lot of people be thrown in. Your whole household, servants, kids, wives. <laughs> But then he made a decree that said that no one should go against the God of Daniel because he's the true and living God. All those things happen at the, at the point of a word, a yes or a no. So I'm hoping that we all understand that our yes and no is a, is, is a powerful thing. So we could go, I, could be, I got other examples we could talk about Samson and his yes and no. and what We know what happened with him. You know, I can go on and on in the Bible uh, from Judas to Peter. <laughs> but um, I want you to know the authority that you have and you've been given. And I want you to know that your yes and no, when you mix it with faith, you mix it with the word, and mix it with prayer, those three combinations, it could bring uh it could bring about detriments to the kingdom of, of the enemy and life abundantly to your kingdom. So if we do it and continue to pray and build up ours, God will build us up. Amen. And that's what that's what I have for today. Um and we're gonna listen to a couple songs and then we'll be done.
know it's a new song. But sometimes it's good to have a song that makes us ponder a little bit while we're experiencing it. So I just want to go back into that third verse. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. I don't want us to sing it like our life depends on it because it does. If you guys are with me. Don't get too hung up over the words. Just know there's another one in the fire. <laughs> Somebody's in the fire with us. <laughs> the solidarity of Jesus is with us, right? Just scream that out. If you don't know the words, scream that out.